ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुर मिलित तस्मा श्री गुरव नम सो दिस इज द वे ऑफ चांटिंग हरे कृष्ण वे डिस्कसिंग विच आश्रम वी शुड बी इन हाउ टू पास आर लाइफ But the real thing is to pass our life chanting the holy names of Krishna. Everything else is external to that. Of course, we have to see to the external also. When we are chanting, dancing, all problems go away. Ji Krishna Das, Ji Vishas, Kol Le Thar, Or Du Konai Rad Ha Krishna Bol 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 Or Eshabai. This is the advice of Gonita who are standing here. They advise, uh, just understand, you are not this body; you are the eternal servant of Krishna. All you have to do is understand this: that you are the eternal servant of Krishna, and all your problems are finished. And then the only thing left to do is chant Hari Krishna. But even if we haven't fully understood, still we should chant Hari Krishna and organize our life in such a way that we can increase our attachment to Krishna. Even Grihastha life is meant for that. Grihastha life is also Grihastha ashram. Ashram means a place of spiritual upliftment. So if in Grihastha life the center is very clearly Krishna consciousness and that is Grihastha ashram now actually we see that uh despite so many descriptions of ideal family life many of our grihasthas they have any problems which is not surprising because all the time you're in brahmacharya life you are reading in prabodh books that grihastha life is full of problems and when brahmacharya becomes a grihastha he suddenly finds out that it's not just something written in the book it's really true and he's thinking well what did i do but anyway that grihastha life means different problems but that's also taking facing the problems in krishna consciousness uh grihastha life means a life of responsibility in many ways life of a brahmachari is very free it means if he doesn't have any management position then all he has to do is concentrate on his own sadhana his own service like this a grihastha man has to look after the material and spiritual life of his wife and children and grihini has to look after the spiritual and material life of her husband and children and it is particularly difficult in the modern age to execute spiritual life uh, at home particularly because the culture is different the culture we when we talk about the vedic culture that means a whole way of life based ultimately on spiritual upliftment just like here in this country the cultural pressure the social pressure is why don't you eat meat why don't you dress like us with practically no clothes on in the summer but the whole culture is based on grossly sinful sense gratification but in uh, vedic culture the whole atmosphere is conducive to spiritual upliftment that's why i was speaking previously that uh, in india especially even today the culture is supported people respect if they see someone is engaged in spiritual activities but it can be difficult for devotees especially grihasthas in this modern age because especially brahmacharis they they lead protective life they're always associating with devotees they they don't have any social life but when one gets married then usually he's living in some apartment and his next door neighbors may not appreciate very much if they hear 4:30 in the morning ding 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 even though they may themselves be up till 1 o'clock in the morning playing some loud videos and movies with shootings and screamings and rock music so that you can't sleep yourself you want to go you want to take rest at 10 o'clock and they want to take rest at 2 o'clock in the morning there are various such difficulties just like you have to get a job to support your family of course at this stage of development of our movement in lithuania uh, not not so many grihastha devotees may be in such a situation many of the devotees who uh, were living in the temple community and then got married they have some engagement within the temple community but usually what we find is that as more and more devotees as the number of grihasthas increases then the temple can't find engagement means they can't support so many grihasthas and they have to find their own means of income so it may be very very difficult for devotees to spend the last few years leading a very saintly life very purified lifestyle in the temple community to all of a sudden have to get a job and mix up with so many non devotional people and that for that he may have to leave home at 7 o'clock in the morning which means he has less time for sadhana so less time for sadhana and then the uh, mixing up with so many materialistic people at work so 
in this way, devotees, they often become weakened. Therefore, <coughs> Prabhupada was recommending that devotees, they should set up their own communities. Especially Prabhupada is recommending this farm community, where devotees, they can live together on their own terms. They can live together very peacefully, produce their own food and chant Hare Krishna, and no one will bother them. So far in the Western world, we haven't seen farm communities become very successful. There are different reasons for this. One reason is that devotees, we're, so, we're brought up in city life and we're so addicted to the city way of life. We're so much accustomed to the mode of passion of the city that we feel uncomfortable if we spend too long away from it. And we don't, we don't feel very comfortable to do farming work. Devotees say, well, I have no experience with that. Of course, if they, have to if they have to take up some job, they may have to learn something else. Oh, they may have to learn to use computers or something else they never did before. They feel more inclined to learn to use a computer than to use farming implements. Another reason is that it, it seems much easier just to earn money in the city. Get a job or do some business, earn some money and buy your food. So it seems that it may be that until this whole city technological lifestyle collapses, as Prabhupada predicted it would, that in the Western countries our farm communities are not going to be very successful unless devotees really take it up very seriously, understanding the importance of it. Because for spiritual development it is much more favorable to live in a devotional community away from the city life. The city way of life is very destructive to spiritual development. And especially, Grihastha life means bringing up children. Bringing up children in the modern cities is not at all conducive to spiritual life. Some of them come through and become very nice devotees. I think you all know Sri Pallad, who is traveling with Mr. Jamna Swami. Do you all know him? So, uh, he was in... He was brought up in a Krishna conscious family in Australia. Of course, they were. he was brought up in the farm community, not in the city. And I don't know if you know Prabhav, he used to come... Did he come here before also? Very nice boy. He, he used to be at my traveling Sankirtan party about 15 years ago, <laughs> when he was a little boy about his size, in his school holidays. He used to come with me for Sankirtan. But many of the children who are brought up in Australia, America, Britain, France, all these countries, whose parents were living in the city, they became attracted to the Kalmi life. Because the modern life, it is very attractive to the senses. And in youth, the senses are very strong. And the, uh, especially the modern, whole modern way of life, it, it very much appeals to the, to the uh, lower senses. The, gross sense gratification. So unless one is very strongly trained, then he is liable to fall victim to that. You see a Jamil, he was very nicely trained as a Brahmin, Vaishnava, but he once saw a young man and young woman embracing and his mind became agitated and he fell down. So Prabhupada, in commenting on this story, he says that to, for, to see people embracing in the streets is a very common thing in the Western countries. I don't know how much it, probably it is here too. So unless one is very strong in Krishna consciousness, his mind will be agitated. The whole modern society is promoting this. This mood, this whole mode of false happiness based on gross sense gratification. So therefore, farm communities, they are much better for children where they can grow up in a sheltered atmosphere, where they can learn about Krishna consciousness without being unnecessarily agitated by the nonsense sense gratification of the modern society. So that is a challenge for the devotees. And I would think, especially in these ex-communist countries, there is more scope for that. More opportunity for that? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the Western countries, there's too much money. Too easy to get money. Therefore, uh, people are not inclined to such a farming way of life. And even government laws, they don't favor the small farmer. By taxes and so many things, they make it very difficult for the small farmer. But here in these countries, still people, they're accustomed to working on the land. At least I saw in Russia, everybody likes to have a dacha. And they're quite accustomed to working on the land, producing vegetables. So seeing as that anyway in these countries, uh, to raise sufficient income for family people, it's difficult. And that people, they're accustomed to this working on the land. And I would suggest that one possibility for Krihastas to think about is to set up farm communities. It doesn't even necessarily have to be officially an ISKCON farm community. 
Sometimes it's easier just for a few families to organize among themselves. I know of uh, several farm communities like this where just different grihastas have got together and said, for, our, for the sake of our families, we have to get away from this hellish city land. And I know at least two gurus in Europe, Western Europe, who have instructed their household, some of their household disciples to go and establish communities like that. Of course, uh, I'm not recommending that you do anything separate from the guidance of your guru and GPC. I'm just giving some ideas based upon some of the ideas that Prabhupada gave. Prabhupada was uh, very enthusiastic to establish farm communities, especially for grihastas to live in. Not that brahmacharis and sannyasis couldn't live there also. That's also important for preaching. To show we're doing so much preaching how Krishna consciousness can improve your life and can improve the world. But if we show, we, we have to show that practically also. How people can live in simple living, high thinking communities, live very peacefully and become ideal people. So if we can demonstrate that, that will be a great example and many people will come to see and take interest in that. Because I don't know about here, but at least in the Western countries, there are many, many people who are very dissatisfied with the modern way of life. And they're looking if there's any practical solution, any positive alternative. So, Krishna Conscious is the alternative. Many people are interested in making communities so they can live together peacefully. But the, such communities cannot be ideal. Because if the idea is simply to live peacefully, but there's no sense of God-realization, then it's also useless. It Instead is. of being hellishly useless in the city, it's peacefully useless in the country. But without Krishna Conscious, anyway, it's all useless. So that is a challenge for the members of our movement to establish such communities and practically show people how we can lead a better life all around, materially and spiritually. So, Hare Krishna, any question? There is uh, some practical solution for problem. We uh, heard her uh, that when cow uh, is, is not able to produce milk any, mm. anymore, uh, it is uh, um, pretty difficult to maintain this cow and it's uh, one of the uh, problems with uh, farm communities are meeting. There is some solution you heard about. So what's your solution? You should kill the cow? It's like saying that there's so many people, they are working. When they get old, we have to maintain them, so we should kill them. Should we do that? There's so many old people, they're not able to work. Should we kill them? Because it costs so much money to feed them. So it's a good solution to kill them. From the practical point of view, you may say yes. So, but no. No civilized person would dream of such a thing. So the same thing, the cow is serving us throughout our life. So there should be no question of killing her. Rather, we should maintain her very nicely. And even from the economic point of view, a cow who knows she's not going to be killed will give more milk throughout our life. Here's a, a, some development of the question. Because we already have some, uh, you know, devotees who are trying to uh, establish farm communities in Lithuania and the problem, uh, particular problem they are meeting is that uh, now they already have uh, five cows and uh, they uh, are giving birth for, for, uh, for, new, for new cows and it means that uh, uh, almost every, every year uh, number of cows is increasing and so on, and actually they are not uh, ready to um, say, to maintain such uh, increase increasement of cows. So it's a practical problem. So they yeah. are confused how to solve it. Yeah, many people ask this question. I guess we have to induce more devotees to move on to the land, get more farming devotees and then give them the cows. Mm -hmm. And both should be engaged in farming. That will be their usefulness. Balabhadra Prabhu, I think he's, he's he came to Lakhwani? Uh, he came to Belarus. Yeah. I think he's coming again, isn't it? I don't know. I believe he's coming. For practical questions, I, for all the details, I suggest you ask him. Because he has, he has specialized in this. He's dedicated his life to this. 
So I suggest for practical questions you ask him. Yeah. I think he's coming again very soon, at least to, to Russia, maybe to Belarus or so. Uh, maybe uh, you could ask him to come here. So uh, at least you could write to him. Is he quiet? I don't know. I know. You can find out where he's in. He, I know. He is on point. Any other questions? Another question, man. <laughs> it was mentioned uh, during the lecture that uh, it seems a devotee uh, will be forced uh, uh, to make some compromise with uh, uh, modern society. So uh, he is asking uh, until that uh, level, uh, until, uh, 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 how, how uh, how far we, we can uh, go and compromise and how where is this you know strict line everyone has to see in their own way how to apply the rules and regulations everyone has to see individually in ah. their own way those who are serious about Krishna conscious must follow the four regulated principles and chant minimum 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra every day but uh, especially those who are not able to live in the ideal ashram situation they may have to make different adjustments. Just like for instance, if a woman has three young children, it's practically impossible for her to have very strict regulated sadhan. Because uh, kids, they need looking after 24 hours a day. Of course, Prabhupada said that in our temple communities we should have kindergartens. So that one or two matajis can look after all the young children and the rest can engage in full-time service. But of course, when the child is very young, then the mother has to directly look after them. But how much adjustment we should make, that should be minimum. Right. So we should maximize our Krishna conscious activities. You also mentioned during your lecture about uh, some classes of devotees who uh, actually uh, doesn't fit any uh, uh, ashram strictly. And for example, who were, uh, were married before they uh, became devotees. So, uh, According to rules of that uh, ashram, we should try to add, uh, especially if, for example, wife is, uh, you know, mm. not very inclined to Krishna. Yeah. It's not uncommon situation. Actually, none of the none of the devotees, when none of us are in, properly fitting in any of these ashrams. Brahmachari doesn't mean that he eats meat and drinks wine and has illicit sex up to the age of 22. Then he joins the Hare Krishna movement and becomes a Brahmachari. Brahmachari means from age of five he's living under very strict discipline. But as much as possible, Prabhupada made Brahmacharis, Krihastas and Sannyasis and just as much as possible to help us advance in Krishna consciousness. But whatever position we come to Krishna consciousness in, from that position, we should try to go on and advance in Krishna consciousness. Again, we have to see in every individual life how to apply it. That's why I say for Brahmachari life, it's much easier to say. It's very simple to give straightforward instructions to Brahmacharis. Come here, shave your head, get a bead bag, get a book bag, and chant Hare Krishna. And very simple, straightforward, and easy. Very simple, straightforward, and easy. Household life means must be complicated, especially in the modern age. So anyway, everyone's individual situation they have to see. If one, if for instance the husband is interested in Krishna consciousness, the wife isn't, what to do? Generally I would recommend, don't try and force the other party to be Krishna. Don't unnecessarily make tension in the home. See, husband and wife, they get married on the basis of sense gratification. And their whole relationship has been one of sense gratification. And all of a sudden, one of the members wants to become Krishna conscious. So it may be, very, it may be difficult for the other party to adjust to. But if they find difficulty to adjust, then it may take a little time and be patient with them. If due to their attachment to you, they also become attached to Krishna conscious, that's also very good. And even if they're not very interested in Krishna consciousness, if they're not against it, then it's not such a bad situation. And we see, now Prabhupada's wife was a devotee, but she wasn't really interested in Prabhupada's preaching activities. Practically, she was an obstacle to his progressive development of Krishna consciousness. 
But still, Prabhupada didn't give up his social or family responsibilities. He uh, always tried to bring his wife and children up to a higher standard. He continued maintaining them. Then after many years, when he saw they were still not interested and he was getting older, then he gradually became detached from the family. When the sons were old enough to maintain it. So that's a uh, good standard. Any other question? I have one mm. practical question. The devotees sometimes are meeting with difficulties when they should uh, to give a name for the newborn child. Because usually, uh, uh, of course, they are, um, they like, would like to give uh, 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 um, devotees name. Mm. But in modern society, especially if a child is going to school and so on and so on, it's uh, very hard uh, for him to be, you know, like, uh, uh, everyone is pointing him mm. and enjoying him and so on and so on. So sometimes they are uh, seriously thinking about to uh, mm -hmm. give a karmi name for a child, just according to him. Uh, a home, some like devotee devo devo mm. name and so uh, Can you um, recommend such some? Would you like to say the question again? In yeah. The, in your language? Therefore it's necessary to have guru codes. Because the other kids, they won't only laugh at the name, they'll laugh at everything they do and everything we're trying to teach them. And the kids will all be talking, did you see that program on TV yesterday? And they'll say, did you see? And say, no, we don't have TV. And then they'll all laugh at him. So then he'll want to have a TV in his home. Uh, then the child will want, and if you don't have, then he'll go to his friend's house and watch. And then your whole endeavor to make him Krishna conscious is practically impossible if you send him to mix with kindness. <coughs> Prabhupada said the modern education institutions are like slaughterhouses. Child, children are very young and innocent. And if instructed about Krishna consciousness, they can very easily become Krishna conscious. But modern society makes children from very young age full of demoniac propensities. So devotees, they shouldn't expose their children to this. We need gurukuls. Best thing is to give your child a devotee name. And in every way, do your best to make him a pure devotee of Krishna. Don't try to make him half devotee, half karma. It won't work. The force of material energy is very strong. Practically guaranteed, if you try to make him half-half, he'll be 99% karma. Okay. The duty of parents <coughs> is not to make their children 50% karma, 50% devotee. etc., etc. So many names are given. Namochya Dhyatsamapita Mityam. One should not become a guru, father, mother, worshipable person, Unless he is able to deliver his dependent from birth and death. So it's a very serious responsibility, which is difficult to execute in the modern age, no doubt. But that is your challenge as devotee parents. This, uh, now we are establishing Krishna consciousness in the Western world. That responsibility lies not only with gurus and sannyasis and brahmacharis, but with all devotees. And in one sense, it especially lies with householders. Because if Krishna consciousness is really going to become established in the Western world, we have to, we have, to have many Grihastha devotees. If it's only a few brahmacharis here and there, our movement cannot be successful. One thing, you, you shouldn't play with it. Uh, because uh, most of the people of the world are householders. So we have to have our devotees uh, householder devotees established. That means if the householders cannot bring up their children to be devotees, and then the children of their children also become devotees, unless we establish this, then Krishna consciousness there's not much hope. It will only remain, remain a monastic and philosophical movement. It will not make a very big impression in changing the culture it's of the Western different. world. Therefore, it's a very great responsibility for householders to bring up their children in Krishna consciousness despite the modern society. Hmm. Sometimes the situation is becoming especially difficult if uh, you have, let's say, three children and uh, two of them are accepting Krishna consciousness and one is rejecting and the situation in a home is becoming pretty 
Spain or Tennis. Yeah. So uh, he's asking uh, actually two questions. One is, uh, uh, does it mean that uh, uh, parents are uh, improperly educating uh, their ch uh, children, or it's uh, something like a law of karma? And second one is uh, how you should deal in such a situation. Again, everyone has to. It's very difficult to give exact advice without knowing all the details of the situation. And many times, devotees have to use their own common sense to judge the situation themselves and make a decision. As far as uh, other family members not becoming Krishna conscious, it may not be our fault. Two out of three have become Krishna conscious. It means that we've done the right thing to inspire at least two of them. So if the other isn't becoming Krishna conscious, well, that's just his own bad luck. It's past. Yeah. Yeah. Even Prabhupada, who made the whole world chant Hare Krishna, his own family members, they weren't interested. It wasn't that Prabhupada was lacking in ability to give Krishna consciousness to others. But his own uh, family members, they didn't want to take it at the level that he was ready to give it. And what was the other question? What should we do in such a situation? Yeah. Well, yeah, then you have to see yourself what to do. On the one hand, you can't compromise with... Uh, you can't compromise with your child if he's just a complete nonsense. For instance, uh, you don't have to feed him meat. But on the other hand, uh, you, you don't have to try and force if he's not going to take it. And that you should know also, that even devotees, if they bring up their children very nicely, and give them all facility to be Krishna conscious. But still, when they get older, they may choose not to be Krishna conscious. Even Advaita Acharya, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even some of his sons chose not to be Krishna conscious. So I can only give a general answer. Uh, and how to work it out in your personal life, that you have to see. Any other questions? Whatever we do, whatever our situation is, we should all come together here and chant and dance. But that should never stop. Whatever else is whatever else is going on in our lives, we should go on chanting and dance. And this in itself will help solve so many problems. And even if there are so many problems, uh, we will be able to live with them. We'll be able to tolerate them if we always chant and dance. So this is the essence. And how we organize our lives, uh, that should be organizing our lives so that we can go on with this chanting and dancing. What language? Well, I think there's some discussion about studying one, isn't there? not being Gurukul yet. I think there is some plan to start something. Yeah? Our movement is very new here and it will take some time to get things organized. So even when the Gurukul is organized, if it's not like the Gurukuls you read about in the Mahabharata or Srimad Bhagavatam, then you should also not be too much disturbed. It will take some time to establish Krishna conscious culture in these different countries. Now, as far as the academic side, Srila Prabhupada said that we want, Gurukul means we want to train up preachers of Krishna consciousness. And he said, as far as education is concerned, if they study my books, that is complete education. And you don't have to learn all this nonsense in the schools. And actually, it really is nonsense. I mean, even I and so many other people, they understood. When I was a kid at school, I understood that.